a small school with a large footprint, a 21st century learning environment. Those are two of the terms that were used in the founding document for MC Squared STEM High School. I'm Jeff McClellan, the founding principal, and I just want to acknowledge the fact that I'm, I'm very nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very used to creating environments in which students are doing amazing things and talking about them on stage. And, and for me, uh, I'd much rather be behind the stage watching them than up here today. But we have a very important story, and it's one that I'm very proud to be able to tell. In 2008, over 80 partners came together with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District and outlined the document that would become MC Squared STEM High School. It was a school that would put kids in learning environments that were, were sometimes sealed off to the students that would access this. It was a lottery-based school that would follow a year-round school calendar and would uh, assess students based on mastery of learning outcomes as opposed to the amount of time that they set in classrooms. The community of Greater Cleveland would become the campus for this high school, with ninth graders attending class at the Great Lakes Science Center and working with the NASA Glenn Research Center and other STEM partners as students explore different STEM professions and start to understand what it might be like to see themselves in these positions. In 10th grade, students transition across the city, actually into East Cleveland, where GE's headquarters for lighting is located. There on Neela Park's campus, our students grow from the beginning stages in ninth grade of exploration through an actual project that GE engineers and volunteers put together that takes students through the entire design process uh, that GE Lighting uses as they're developing a product. Then in 11th and 12th grade, we turn this inside out. By then, students have had experiences with the partners that I've mentioned and several others through internships and shadowing and experienced their project-based uh, curriculum in the way that I've described and they're ready to explore different options around the city. So in 11th grade, the city itself becomes the campus for the high school, with students doing paid internships in companies like Rockwell Automation, Turner Construction, Lockheed Martin, GE Lighting, NASA, and the list goes on and on, and taking their classes wherever is the best fit for them, whether it's Cleveland State's campus or any of the other college campuses around the area, or with us in our home base for 11th and 12th grade, which is also on the Great Lakes, or excuse me, is on Cleveland State University's campus. Our students have, have flourished in this environment. And over the course of the first few years, it became evident that something really special was taking place inside the, the walls of the school and inside the city limits where our students were uh, participating in their different experiences. When our first graduating class walked to the, to the front of the stage in 2012, those kids had uh, been offered over $6 million with a scholarship money, and every one of them had been accepted to college somewhere. Quite an accomplishment in any case. But, but even a greater accomplishment considering the fact that this population of kids was not accepted into our school based on any set of test scores or any interviews or anything like that. All they needed to do would say, I want to go to MC Squared STEM. And then they needed to work hard and put up with everything that we were doing with them to make it through. Not only were we starting to see the results in our students, but others were starting to take notice of what was going on in our school. Um, we were recognized by some national organizations, and even, even some visitors from international uh, organizations were coming to, to take a look at what was happening in Cleveland. Um, our, the recognition spread, and, and, and you know, we, we received a, a couple different awards for the work that we did, and, and it, was, it felt really good. It felt really good to understand that this vision that had been created collectively by the city of Cleveland and the surrounding communities with the Cleveland School District had really created a kind of environment that could produce the leaders for the 21st century that we, that we were pretty sure we could. But there was this hollow feeling when people would leave uh, and we couldn't quite articulate what it was that was happening. Yes, the test scores were, were good. Yes, the graduation rate was high. Yes, they're getting into college at, at acceptable levels, at high, higher than acceptable levels. And, and yes, there's a special quality inside the students that, that you could see when you talked to them or when you, when you saw their work. Um, but we couldn't really explain that. And, and I'm here today to tell you we still haven't completely figured it out, but we're starting to look at this through uh, 
a one specific lens. Okay. And in, in, in true step with our school, science, technology, engineering, and math, uh, when we were researching some of the pieces of, of schools and some of the things that kids need to be successful, three things came up. Motivation, self-management, and social engagement. Well, uh, three is also the number of points on an isosceles triangle. And, and for centuries, people have known that an isosceles triangle is the strongest two-dimensional structure uh, in engineering. And, and what is it that we're really creating? And what is it that's different about the kids that are graduating from our schools? It's that they're strong. It's that, that they can withstand the forces that the city uh, puts upon them and the, the circumstances that they come from, and they can sustain their growth, and they can, they can persist. So with that notion and with that knowledge of what an isosceles triangle means from a strength perception, we, we've developed this student success triangle. And the idea is this. Uh, you're not going to be successful unless you're academically challenged. Uh, but you're also not going to be successful with the best academic curriculum if you're not sound in the areas of motivation, social engagement, and self-management. And the idea is that, that through this completely different approach that um, the kids are being exposed to in our school, they're actually creating this schema that makes them more whole in these areas. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about each one now. Motivation. Imagine for a second, and some of you this may work for, but for me, uh, it wouldn't. Imagine for one second that you were told in a month you were going to be playing basketball against LeBron James, one-on-one. -on -one. But don't worry, because you're going to get the best coach in the world for that month to prepare, and then in a month you're going to go on the court and play with LeBron. Well, I don't care if you gave me a month or the next 10 years. That's really not going to go very well for me. Um, <laughs> Now imagine the same situation with, with school. We tell kids, it's okay that you haven't been successful before. We're going to work really hard in a month, and then we're going to assess you at the end of that month, and you're going to be fine. I think you can understand what I'm saying. You know, that idea that we're going to close these gaps in that short of a time with everybody doesn't leave a lot of room for motivation. Uh, and what, what was clear as we interviewed our graduates was that the motivation that they felt and the encouragement that they were receiving was a direct result of one of the key components of our school model, which was, was mastery. And simply put, uh, mastery takes this set of important learning outcomes and says, we're going we're gonna to make sure that you know these at a high level. And then we're going to provide the time and resources necessary to make sure that you get there. In the traditional environment, time is the constant, and what you know is the variable. Uh, but in our, in our construct, what you know is the constant, and the time you need is the variable. And because of the model that I've been so fortunate to be a part of, and because of the support from the community, we're able to individualize the attention that kids get and give them the time to reach these key skills. The second major component is social engagement. I mean, typically when you think about social engagement in a school environment, we're talking about prom, extracurricular activities, the ways kids relate to other kids in the school, and those are really important things. But the interesting part about it is, is think about it for a second. You know, and I was blessed with a very strong family myself. And think about it for a second. Who is it that you're going to call when you're struggling in college? Who is it that you're going to rely on if, if you don't have the experiences to deal with the situation that, that you're, you're faced with? If you're a first-generation college student, there isn't somebody that's gone through that experience in your immediate family. You know, that's no disrespect to you or to, to your family. It's just the truth. And what we found when we talked to our kids that were graduating was that they had actually taken this notion of social engagement from the point of engaging with my peers and supporting each other, which was a big part, but they also had been benefiting from the relationships that they had with the adults in the environment. This is Hakeem here in the foreground. Uh, Hakeem is an engineer at GE, and Hakeem has a lunch buddy every year. He eats lunch, and so, do, so does every other student in our 10th grade. They eat lunch with a, a GE volunteer twice a month. And there's a small little speed dating uh, event at the front end to match the mentors up. Uh, and, then, and then the student engages with this person twice a month the whole time they're in 10th grade. 
That's powerful. Now, that's powerful for me. That's also very powerful for people who don't necessarily have the experiences uh, in their home situations to have people around them that have the answers, that have gone to school for engineering, that understand how to make it through these situations. And our kids talk about networks that they've developed and, and talk about the, the, ex, the, the executive from Key Bank who the student can pick up the phone and call when they have a question about something. And, and that matters. I think you can follow me now with this triangle thing. So you have to be motivated and you have to be uh, properly engaged, okay? The third component of the, the triangle is self-management. I can be properly prepared to take on this task. I can have the right people around me. But if I lose control of myself, or if I participate in, in destructive behaviors that compromise my ability to get to the end, then I'm not going to be successful. And unfortunately, too many times when kids enter MC Squared STEM High School, they've been conditioned to respond negatively to situations. This situation here that you're reading now uh, is the opposite of that. And this is the situation that, that uh, we're most proud of. Students getting recognized in college for for the work that they've done in college means that there's been some carryover from what was happening in the high school. You know? and, and as a lottery school, there's a wide range of kids that enter. Uh, not every student has the same uh, drastic needs as the others, but some of the kids that come into our school situation have, have experienced some of the most deplorable situations uh, imaginable and, and have not been taught the right way to manage those situations. So, so there's this process. We're unringing Pavlov's bell. Okay? Kids come in in ninth grade, it's a very scary time. Ninth grade, you, you don't want people to know, you don't know what's going on. Ninth grade, you're, you're stepping into this new world. Everyone's told you how big high school is going to be and how different it is and how you have to step up. Well, and stepping up means something different for a lot of people. So, so something's happening in our school, and I believe strongly that it's this connection that the whole community has to the school that's creating this, this situation where the bell is actually unringing. And when they're graduating, they're conditioned to respond to situations in a different way. I'm going to leave you with a story today, and it's not the story of, of a student going to an Ivy League school, which we've had two students so far go to Ivy League schools. It's not the story of someone winning a national competition or uh, getting published for some of the work that the student did, but it's a story of a student named James. And as a principal, you pretty much can make a list of what you're going to do that day, and then once the day starts, you're kind of at the mercy of, of the day. And, and this July at GE was no different. And I was standing outside, it was a nice uh, warm day, and I was standing outside uh, waiting as the kids were coming into school. And at GE they come in in vans and get dropped off out front and, and come in. But this day, uh, the van that James was in didn't even stop and James was out the front door and sprinting to the school. Uh, my first thought was, who's chasing him and what did he do? Uh, which, if you knew James at all, wouldn't be too far out of the realm of possibilities because uh, his triangle was really not aligned very well when he came to us. Um, but, but this moment, it was, it was something different, and James was running up to me, and I could tell when he got close that he wasn't scared because I'd seen him scared before, too. Uh, what, what was going on was James had been sitting in church the day before, and he'd been watching this curtain flap on the wall, and he said, you know what? There's a laser cutter in the fab lab at GE. I can go in to that laser cutter and I can make something that stops that curtain from flapping. You know, I let him in to the fab lab and I told his teacher he was going to be late to class and then the day just kept going. I realized if we can get James, we can get pretty much anyone. Thank you.